promotions, promotions, promotions. Everyone wants to know how do they get better? How do they level up? That's super natural. So in this video today, guys, I'm gonna tell you a bit more about how promotions in software engineering work. Stay tuned. I'm still here in Charleston in this beautiful, beautiful, amazing treehouse, loving my backdrop. And in this video today, I'm gonna tell you a bit more about how promotions and leveling and getting better and how you get evaluated in software engineering works. I'm going to be relying on specifically Silicon Valley companies and I'm gonna be talking a bit more about companies of bigger sizes. So think Airbnb, Uber, Facebook, Google, Dropbox, you name it. Generally, companies like this have a leveling system. And what I mean by a leveling system is you are a software engineer, a software developer of a level X. And having that level X essentially tells you where is it that you're right now in terms of your skill set, and it gives you an idea of how to get to the next level. Because usually in companies there is a leveling framework with the guidelines and criteria of how to get to the next level and how to to evaluate an employee at their current level. Companies like Google, Uber, Facebook, Airbnb have a leveling system for software engineers that start at level three. And the reason why it's level three is because the general system of the company starts at level zero or level one, depending on the company, but because software engineering is a specialized career with a special skill set, they don't start at level one, they actually start at level three right away. So as a new grad out of university, you would start as a level three new grad software engineer. And essentially going from level three, there is up to usually level 12 of a developer that you can become. Level 12 is honestly quite unheard of. I personally do not know anyone even of level 10, I think. If you think of level 12, that would be like VP, SVP level or CTO uh, level engineers at a company. So say like CTO of Airbnb, CTO of Google, etc. they would probably be somewhere at level 11 or level 12. And if you're at level 10, you're kind of boom, like you're incredibly, incredibly accomplished and you would be hired by a company as a fellow. Principal, staff engineer, staff engineer is usually level six, principal is level level seven and up, depending on the company. So essentially as a new grad, you start at level three and the uh, criteria that you go by is usually, and I'm kind of generalizing the companies, are scope, impact, autonomy, technical expertise, collaboration, and something that Airbnb has is also enrichment. And now that you guys know the criteria, I would love for you to leave a comment down below to let me know what do you think is the main criteria that software engineers should be evaluated on. I would love to hear your thoughts. And we're gonna talk a bit more about each one of these. By the way, guys, if you are new to my channel, my name is Luba and I talk about life in Silicon Valley and my journey of how I got here. If you are interested in this content, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Let's look over each one of these criteria separately. What does impact mean? Impact mean that on different level of your software engineering career, you successfully complete either a task or a scoped out project or a project that you yourself developed the guidelines for. So essentially level three engineers usually are given tasks, given like scoped out assignments, level four engineers start to be given bigger projects. Level five engineers is when you have to go out there yourself and identify the problem and then come up with an idea of how to fix that problem. And then you scope your project out yourself and so on. So essentially impact is how successful you are at completing that task, that project that is assigned to you at your level. Then we're gonna look at the scope. Scope is actually the size of that specific uh, project task. So again, if you're a new grad, if you're a level three engineer, the scope of your tasks of projects is gonna be small. And essentially the bigger the scope becomes and 
the more you want to learn and grow, the bigger projects you're gonna be taking on. And the scope of that project, essentially how much impact it has on your team, on potentially the organization defines how senior you are. The next thing is the technical expertise. So technical expertise, pretty straightforward. How much do you know in a specific domain? How you can mentor others? Are you a, a kind of like a thought leader in that specific domain? How good are your technical reviews to your other team members? Because as I said in um, one of my previous videos about lessons that I learned as a software engineer, being a software engineer is a, an extremely collaborative role. And actually you are being evaluated on that collaboration aspect as well. So as an engineer on the team, you will most likely be mentoring other people. You will be reviewing other people's code. So essentially technical expertise kind of encompasses all of those things aside from your own knowledge and savvy in different technical systems and uh, in the speed of execution. Another criteria that engineers get evaluated on is autonomy. Do you need to be a handheld when you're completing a project and or a task? Do you ask a thousand questions and cannot figure anything out yourself? That actually goes back to my other lessons that I posted in my lessons as a software engineer video that, um, you know, you are going to be struggling and you just need to embrace that because almost like every day, every week on any new project, you are faced with new problems new challenges that you need to figure out most likely on your own it's absolutely okay to ask questions that's totally fine but you know at the end of the day you need to develop that autonomous muscle of being able to be self-sufficient knowing when to ask for help knowing what people to reach out to to um, get a project going for example so that autonomy is another thing that is very important in software engineering and that's something that you're going to be evaluated upon collaboration as I already brushed upon this before how how well do you collaborate with others? Do your projects and your day-to-day -day activities involve collaborating with more than one person, collaborating with maybe other teams or maybe cross functions like designers or researchers or product managers? Are you good at influencing other people to essentially come together and bring the task, the idea, the project that you're working on forward? That's extremely important. And something that also, something special that Airbnb does is enrichment and enrichment essentially you know, given back to the community, to the company culture, and that would come through recruiting, given technical talks internally or externally, participating in any kind of, you know, club. So for instance, we have women in engineering, and that would count as enrichment if you're an active member of that group. If you're a member of a minority group at work, so for instance, Black Hat or Latin group, etc., then if you're an active member of that community, you would, you would count that as enrichment. As I already mentioned, interviewing other engineers, so recruiting, that would be enrichment. So how it works is essentially every half a year, companies go through the review cycle. So you usually write your self-review. So you look at this matrix of criteria that you get evaluated upon and essentially write out, you know, how you did on each one of these criteria, what projects you work on, how you would evaluate yourself and what you could do better. And then you also select peers that are gonna write a review about yourself. So it's essentially like a forced way to give feedback and receive feedback. So you select peers and they might choose to opt out or decide to write a review for you. And then your manager also writes a review for you on this set of criteria. So the way to get promoted is that first at your own level, let's say you're a new grad, you're an L3, you have to already be performing at an L4 level to get promoted to L4. And usually on average, it takes one and a half to two years to get to the next level. And essentially also besides being evaluated on this criteria, you also get a grade. And you know, if you're constantly getting exceeds expectations at your current level, there is a big chance that you're gonna be promoted. However, you should also be very transparent with your manager about what your goals are, how fast you wanna be promoted. Is that even something that you're interested in right now? or do you want to double down on learning new technologies or learning and working on new exciting stuff in general? Not that you can do it while also going forward with the promotion, but you know, all these things are very important to be transparent with, with someone who your manager is supposed to help you find the right opportunities that match with your goals. And then you know exactly what is it that you need to work on, how you're doing with respect to what you were thinking, how you were doing and how the company thinks you're doing. And that's basically a way for you 
you to get better, learn new things, and go down that ladder to get promoted to the next level. So that's essentially how promotions at bigger companies in software engineering work like. And, um, you know, manager trajectory, if you want to become a manager, is a whole different story. And I will make a video on that specifically. It's also quite interesting. But yeah, hope you guys found this useful. And if you did, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and more videos on the topics of life in Silicon Valley in general. And I hope you guys now have a good idea of how promotions in software engineering works like. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and bye for now.